sport right now, if I tap it, gear one, gear three, same thing if I downshift, back to one. It works really well. What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. So in today's video, I got a really cool mod for my automatic boys. So as a lot of you guys may know, from the factory, the non-M or the non-SMG E46s that are automatic actually never came with paddle shifters from the factory. Which is weird because when you look at the steering wheel and the clock spring setup, everything is identical to the non-M E46 models. The only difference being is that you're missing a connection point that sits inside the clock spring. And on top of that, of course, the paddle shifters that sit on the steering wheel. So in today's video, I'm going to completely show you guys on how to get working paddle shifters in your non-SMG E46. E46s are also known as the Steptronic Automatics. But with all that being said, let's head on straight into the install. So the parts you're going to need to get this mod installed onto your car, the first thing you're going to need is to pick up an SMG steering wheel off of E46 M3. I picked this one up used and it was fairly cheap because it was in rough condition and basically I just went ahead and refinished it. And one of the main reasons I picked up this steering wheel in specific is because the previous owner actually installed these carbon fiber paddle shifters which look really nice. And as of right now, I'm still waiting to get my carbon fiber trim pieces into the mail. So I'm just gonna go ahead and reuse the last trim pieces I have on my steering wheel I have right now. The other part you need is gonna be a clock spring off an of E46 M3, and you have to make sure it's SMG because the non-SMG models are actually missing these two pins that sit inside right here. And those are the pins that are used for your paddle shifters. And one of the things I realized is that when I went to the BMW dealership to pick up a clock spring for an E46 SMG, they actually discontinued the non-SMG ones that sit in the normal regular E46s. They only have these ones available at the dealership. The next thing you're going to need is to pick up this clip set, which you also pick up at the dealership. I got mine for 20 bucks. It's pretty cheap. And you're also going to need some extra wiring. I'll also go ahead and leave all the part numbers for you guys right on the screen. And I'll also leave it in the description. But other than that, let's go ahead and start the install. So the first thing you want to do is go ahead and disconnect the negative terminal on your battery. So just a 10 millimeter bolt right at the negative terminal. They just want to undo and then just pull it to the side. So now that the negative battery terminal is disconnected, you want to go ahead and start pulling off the steering wheel. So the first thing you have to do is grab two flatheads or two screwdrivers, but it is preferred if they're flatheads. And you basically want to go behind the steering wheel. There's a hole right here. And then there's another hole exactly on the other opposite side right here. And basically what you want to do, you want to stick them in both at the same time and push towards the inside of the steering wheel towards the airbag. And then there's basically two clips that are holding in the airbag and then the airbag just pops out. So once you go ahead and do that, the airbag is going to pop out. And then once the airbag's out, you just want to go ahead and disconnect those cables. So basically to get a rough idea of what you're supposed to do to get the airbag out, you basically want to stick the flathead in and then there's a spring right here that you want to push towards the inside of the car, just like that. And you want to do that basically at the same time on each side and then the airbag just pops out. So now you want to go ahead and disconnect those cables right there. So now that those cables are disconnected, you can go ahead and undo this 16 millimeter bolt that holds the steering wheel. So once the steering wheel is off, you just want to make sure that you don't spin this clock spring too much. You could just tape it into place, but just make sure you don't spin it or else it could break. So basically once you have that out the way, now you want to go underneath and take off this foot wall cover. So basically there's three Phillips screws, one that sits right here, one over here, there's another one over here. There's a pull tab over here. And then there's another twist tab that you just twist and it unlocks all the way at the back over here. So once you do that, I'm just going to go ahead and just leave mine hanging like this because that's all the space you're really going to need to get the job done. If you want to completely take this out, you just have to make sure you disconnect your OBD port as well as the light port. So now there's a Phillips screw that sits right on top of the steering wheel. You want to take that one out. And then there's also two push pins that sit at the bottom of the steering wheel that you want to undo those as well. So once you pull out the two pins at the bottom, you basically just want to pull it down from the back side and then this whole thing just pops out. After you do that, you can just go ahead and pull up this top portion and then that, that's all the space you really need to take out the clock spring. So now there's four Torx 25 bolts that you want to take out as well. So now they have those four bolts out, the clock spring should just pull out straight. And then you just want to make sure they disconnect the cable from behind it when you pull it out. So now that you have the clock spring out the car, you basically just want to flip it around Put it on the table and then to take off these switches you basically just have to push in like this and then they pull out so basically you just want to squeeze like this and then it pulls out from the back like that so i just went ahead and pulled out my new clock spring i also attached these side pieces to it and then i'm just going to leave this to the side real quick up over here and now we're going to go ahead and just prep the wiring so this is how the wiring came out for me I basically just stuck the extra wiring I had. I stuck it into the metal bracket holder piece that basically makes it lock into this. 
And then I wrapped it around and then I just used the foregrip and just closed it up so it stays nice and tight in there. And then that shouldn't move at all. So now I basically just went ahead and plugged in the new clock spring I have. I just took off the safety pin that basically prevents this from rotating. And then also now I want to reconnect the four bolts, the Torx 25s. You also want to make sure that you also went ahead and plugged in all the cables that connected to the clock spring that sit behind it. So now the next step is to take off this shifter boot cover. So you basically just pull at it from the back side and it should just pop out like this. Just move that up and out the way. You want to disconnect those two cables. After that's done, there's a Phillips screw right there and right there that you want to take out so you can gain access to the shifter wires. Once you pull this piece out the way, just make sure you disconnect the two cables that sit one on each side and then just pull it out. And now we're going to have access to these cable set right here. So now remember those cables that we prepped earlier for this holder? You just want to stick them inside and hear them click into place. And then you also want to cut the cables roughly to the length of imagine running it from down to here, over here, and then running it to the shifter boot area. So you just want to cut it roughly that long so you can just get it long enough so it hooks up to these cables over here. So now I went ahead and I connected the cable to behind the clock spring and I'm just routing the cables basically through here. And you do want to make sure that there's a bit of plane that's not too tight just in case it doesn't pull out the, the connection you just made. So now that it's running over here, I'm just going to quickly hook this back up where it's supposed to be and then run the cable from under here into the shifter boot. So after that's done, I hooked everything back up and it's ran all the way under here. And now it basically just pops out from here. I'm basically just going to cut these to size after I hook them up and just make it so it's nice and tidy. But before we do that, I'm just going to quickly go ahead and reconnect the steering wheel. So you want to put this bottom plastic piece back on and then just remember that there's two pushing tabs at the bottom and then there's a Phillips screw at the top. And you also want to make sure all the clips on the side clip in and make sure it's lined up properly. So now you want to go ahead, grab the steering wheel, make sure that the lining points line up when you put it on. And then you should just easily put it on just like that. Then you want to go ahead reconnect that 16 millimeter bolt and then hook in all the cables. After you have all those in, you wanna go ahead and reconnect your airbag. So after you have the steering wheel connected, I also went ahead and quickly reconnected the battery so I can start testing out the wiring. So now you wanna tap into the two cables that hook up to this purple connector. So basically the cables you wanna hook up to are, it's the blue and purple and the blue and yellow right here. You guys see which ones I tapped them into? Those two. So basically once you tap them in and you hook them up, that's basically supposed to control your upshift and your downshift. So once you have those tapped, let me zoom out. You wanna turn on your car. And then after you do that, put it into drive, knock it into sport. So knock it to the left. I also wanna have to reconnect all the cables. And then this should work. Upshift. As you guys see, it's working. I'm using the paddle right now. Upshift three. I'm pretty sure when you're parked, it won't go higher than three. Let's try the downshift. Yeah, so as you guys can see, it's working. There you go, perfect. So I'm just gonna put this back into park, turn it off. So basically what you wanna do now is you, you wanna make this wiring obviously a bit more clean and a bit more legit. So I'm gonna disconnect the cabling, cut these to size, rewire everything, and then everything should be good to go. So basically as a final product, this is what it looks like. I basically used this plastic piece that used to keep this into place. I basically separated the wires, two on each side, just so it holds and separates the two wires we just altered with. So basically they don't touch each other and screw up the signal in any way. And basically other than that, everything else is normal. So I'm just gonna go ahead and hook up this window trim piece, hook up the cables, put everything back together, and then just let's go for a drive and see how this works. All right, so I now have everything back together. So let's just take it on a drive and see how it turns out. So now the car's in sport mode. It's shifting automatically, but as soon as I press this downshift, it downshifts. It works like a charm. The downshift. Upshift. It's pretty.
pretty responsive too. I'm actually surprised. There's about like a one second delay, but it, it's actually quicker than I thought it would be. That works amazing. That came out so good. It just improves the driving feel of the car by so much when you have paddle shifters. And here we are just driving around normally. Press the downshift. Upshift. Works really good. It just improves the driving feel by so much. And I know the automatic transmissions and these E46s are definitely no dual clutch where they shift super fast, but just having these power shifters is just a cool little party trick and it's really nice to have. Yeah, works perfect. I'm super happy with how it came out. So after the install, what do you guys think? Me personally, I actually feel like it came out really good, especially refinishing the steering wheel was a really good move. And the paddles are actually a lot more responsive than I thought they would be too. Like if I put it into drive, it's a sport right now. If I tap it, gear one, gear three, same thing if I downshift, back to one. It works really well. I just it improves the dropping feel by so much. I feel like it's a well worth mod. Especially because you could pick up one of these E46 M3 steering wheels for pretty cheap online, used. And just about overall, it was a really straightforward mod to do. It literally only took me like an hour to get done. And on top of that, if you go ahead and swap your M3 steering wheel, you could actually go ahead and end up selling your last steering wheel so you can make some money back. So the mod ends up being cheaper than you thought it initially would be. But other than that, guys, that's going to be the end of this video. If you guys have any questions or any comments, just leave them down below. I'm more than happy to answer. I also recently went ahead and made a new Instagram page. So you guys can go ahead and follow me there because I do find it really cool connecting with you guys. But other than that, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed the video and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.